This is episode 137 of Let's Talk Geek, your weekly dose for everything geeky. In the show this week, we yap about uncapped internet, what should we call it, wireless comms without batteries, and Dune, where the spice and donkeys must flow. Thanks for watching. In the show with me today is Luke. Hello. Thanks for joining us, Luke. Thank you, thank you. We have the mixer. Hello. The mixer, you have a name. May I call you by your name? Yes. It's Annie, everyone. <laughs> and me, I'm Jan. Luke, what manner of geek are you? I am an everyman's geek. I geek to everything. Everything? Everything. Except golf, I hope. Uh, well, th- there are exceptions. <laughs> <Just> naturally, <laughs> naturally, there are exceptions. Just checking. Annie, what manner of geek are you? I'd call myself a space geek, adrenaline geek, tech, gadgets, video, photography, all kinds of stuff. That's like an every man's geek as well. It's it's an every woman's geek. I'm an every woman's geek. Uh, Political correctness gone (laughs) mad. (laughs) I'm Jan Vermeulen, and I work for mybroadband.co.za. That kind of makes me, forces me to be a telecommunications and gadgetry and broadband geek. So um, when it comes to... News geek. News geek. I'm a news geek. (laughs) When you break it right down. Anyway, this week's random is 137 is a strictly non-palindromic number. And I completely like mess the random up by telling you exactly what the number is, but uh, there it is. Um, And a non-palindromic number is a number that um, if when it falls between base two and base the number minus two, so like the number six, for example, would be between base two and base four, um, then you write the number out in those bases. So the number six, for example, is written as 110 in binary, as 20 in base three, and as 12 in base four. And in none of those bases, the number is a palindrome. So it is a strictly non-palindromic number. There you go. It's that a was, mouthful and it's complicated to think about. Yes, <laughs> and, and that's courtesy of Luke. I kind of stole your thunder there, Luke. But that's thanks, fine. Thanks I that. just found the link, that's yeah. all. And thanks to Wikipedia. I think we slapped a Wikipedia slide up on, on, uh, on screen for those of you watching the video stream. Um, and I am officially old and 30 and old. And coincidentally, EA launched the NES 30 years ago. With, uh, EA didn't launch the NES. No, it Mixer? must be Nintendo. Nintendo, Nintendo. launched the NES. Does it say EA? Yes. It is supposed to say Nintendo. The oh, Nintendo the launched shock. the NES the 30 Famicom. years ago. The Famicom, the Famicom. is yeah, yeah. 30 is years NES, old. Yeah. Uh, Donkey Kong and a whole bunch of other games. On my birthday. Not on your birthday. Close. But uh, today. The Famicom was launched... Um, ooh, now I can't remember. So we're now August, September... There were a bunch of the games released in September, and some of them were released a few months ago. But but the NES in general is now thirty years old. And July fifteenth, nineteen eighty three, was the Famicom, and the NES October eighteenth, nineteen eighty five. Yep. Okay. So the Famicom and the NES are thirty years old. Nintendo, those games, Donkey Kong is thirty years old, and so are you. Cool. It's official. You're old. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. If you're just joining us in the live stream right now, you can uh, climb into IRC, irc.ltnet.tv, and you can come and yap at us there. I've got Twitter open. I'm at YanVZA. I'm not following the Athletes Talky Twitter account right now. Or, you know what? I'm going to do a search. That's what's going to happen. Uh, you can tweet us. Uh, at Let's Talk Geek, and I will see it pop up in my Twitter account if you feel like doing that. Um, and if you feel like writing us after the show, you can anything at Let's Talk Network uh, Any you can literally type anything, or you can so like Jan is old at Let's Talk Network TV. Yes, and okay. you can wish me happy birthday. Um, so there's that. And uh, with that, I think it's time to do the quick geek. The Quick Geeks rules are simple. We have two minutes to discuss a topic. The person who is, uh, who is most interesting wins. Since the judge, the mixer, is part of the show today. Um, we she, need independent auditing. I think the odds are stacked <laughs> in her favor. But, yes. uh, but we'll do this anyway. This, this feels wrong. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. First up, Nuke Map 3D. Um, this was actually... Pretty cool. So the, this is a, the extension of the project Nuke Map. 
um, which uh, which are badly drawn paintbrush style uh, graphics <laughs> no. overlaid on Google Earth. <laughs> no, um, what this is well, that's not so. It bad. Looks like someone missed, spilt like coffee. On Wh- what you do is you select your nuke. You select the yield of the nuke. You select a target area of the nuke. Then you can say, does this nuke detonate in the air like it was dropped from a military aircraft? Or does it um, explode on the ground oh, like so it was it's terrorist? Like a theoretical nuking uh, yes. thing. So then, okay. um, so then while this looks a lot cooler than I think it, it really is, um, what Nuke Map 3D does is it takes to Google Earth what used to be in just Google Maps. So it draws okay. a 3D mushroom cloud, but it's really just for aesthetic value as far as I can see. The real value in this is it shows you the, uh, the impact area. Show, so it shows you um, how, how much of the area is devastated by the, the, the yield of nuke that you detonated there. And then you can choose a fallout area. So you can choose wind direction and wind strength, and then it'll plot the fallout for you um, based on I've just tried parameters. it out. It's quite cool because then it shows you all the rings of, you know, the radius of each independent thing. So like yeah. fireball radius, air blast radius, uh, thermal radiation radius, etc., etc. Yeah, it's exactly. Very cool. So uh, I naturally dropped one on Pretoria um, to see what the effect would be. Sorry. And I, it's interesting, like a standard… That's not Pretoria. That's my uh, No, that wasn't me. That was, uh, was um, swiped from the verge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh and what was interesting was that a standard terrorist yield, which I think was about 20 kilotons for a dirty bomb, um, uh, did not cause as much devastation as – I mean, it would be pretty terrible. Uh, it also sure. does a calculation on a death toll. So we're talking thousands of people dead. But it doesn't hit the whole city even. Um, so it will wipe out like a good number of city blocks – but it won't take, you know, you think, oh, it's a nuke. It's going to just wipe out all of mankind. But at that yield, it, it will take a large chunk out of the city, but it won't wipe out the whole thing. But, but now surely you can use this as like a, a terrorist plotting tool because now you can see <laughs> how it's going to sort of work out, right? Well, surely one this hope, is a really bad idea. One would hope that the terrorists, well, while, while they might not have something like this, they'd know kind of what they want to achieve by detonating a nuke somewhere. Um, so, yeah, I well, don't know. I mean, I, I like the fact that the default location is Manhattan and I can plot my terrorist actions right now. <laughs> you say, say it louder so the NSA can uh, start wiring. Hey, man, they've you. been on me all day with the <laughs> Skype conversations I've been having. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Skype. That, like, <laughs> yeah. A direct backdoor. Um, anyway, moving it, uh, swiftly along. It still looks like it was drawn in paintbrush. Come on, it looks like an octopus's ink just coming out from the bottom. It's, it's, that's really bad. Yes, but I'd have it's to see drawn it in, in Google Earth. But now, no, no, it literally just appears. It doesn't like come pluming up or anything so like that. So it's not even like a visualization. No, it just goes, whoop, this is where the mushroom cloud would be. Ugh. Well, you're going to see where the bomb's going to hit. Uh, and, and this is not all you see. So the screenshot we're showing up on the screen right now is not entirely representative because the real power in this is it draws concentric circles around the impact area to show you what's going to happen. So this is just yeah. like a basic visualization. Um, the, the real power in this comes in the GIS overlays that, that it's got built in with. Give it. me a map book and crayons and I can do the same for you. Moving uh, along. Not dynamically. It's 3D, Annie. <laughs> 3D. <laughs> and 3D. That's the other thing. You can actually sort of um, float away and then go show me um, ground zero and then it'll move your camera view to ground zero from which, whichever that's, that's place cool. you are. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's kind of cool. I like cute. that. Yeah. <laughs> then, Luke, you found this. Wireless comms without batteries. I want this already. So based on the headline. it's kind of deceptive about is what this they're saying. Cool as cool as it, it sounds. It is freaking cool because you can take a circuit with an antenna that is completely unpowered and use what they call ambient backscatter, and that is uh, basically any radio frequency that would naturally hit you. So good old fashioned radio or TV. Uh, your cell phone stuff, networks. Will, will visible light and that sort of stuff I'm work not for sure this? about visible light. I think it has to be pretty low, low on the yeah, spectrum. But I'm pretty sure that light and radio frequencies are considered 
to be quite different. Yes, they're, yes. they're different, but they're just different they're frequencies. Just, yes, they're just like light is measured in like nanometers, whereas this stuff is measured in I don't know what else. Yeah, but yeah. Um, in any event, meters so you can you can power apparently power these devices using this ambient background radiation, which is freaking cool because. Uh, and just think about all the cool practical applications you can have for this. Because now maybe you don't even need things like NFC or RFID to communicate with some kind of device or anymore. You don't actively have to power anything anymore to have comms. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's cool. Uh, its downside is they, they talk here that it's not the most stellar bit tra- rate transmission at one kilobit per second. Dude, uh, but that is rocking for no power. <laughs> take, yes. take that back to like 1983. Yeah, People yeah, yeah, are like, yeah. "Whoa, 1024 uh, board, man!" <laughs> so indoors and outdoors, it can it can make a difference between two and a half, three feet, and one and a half feet, which is about 60 centimeters to about 40 centimeters. So it's also not stellar distances, but. No power. Yes. <laughs> you know? That's pretty cool. All right. Um, it's going to so be interesting to see what – it's It's always interesting to give engineers something and go, you've got a kilobit per second. Go. Sure. <laughs> kind of thing. Because that's when like very interesting creative stuff starts happening when you've got a – I mean it means you have well, to bit pack and you have to do all kinds of annoying things. They always things. say that uh, constraint breeds creativity. So I can completely see that really innovative things could come out yeah. of there. Now, my, my problem is if this starts taking off immediately, I hope we don't land in a similar problem as SMS. So, uh, for example, SMS is limited to 160 characters, which have affected how long a tweet may be. So tweets may only be 140 characters because yes. SMSs were only 160 characters at the time, right? And so now we sit with a situation that both tweets and SMSs are – artificially short because of um, what they were at the time. Now we can chain SMSs well, it, it's together. Just a, it's just a dumb carrier. So there would be no limitation like that because you would then determine what gets sent over the, the I, medium. I guess. I guess. Because what, what, so, it's not far enough that you could send an SMS unless maybe they can amplify the yeah, distance of this text. Yeah. I, what, what I mean is is that the, the, the standards that come from this um, bit – uh, yes, but speed limitation um, uh, that 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 doesn't uh, cause <laughs> cause us to be stuck with legacy like we are now. Yes. Anyway, it depends on how quickly it's adopted. Uh, sure, is is my point. But very interesting, nonetheless. Um, I I want to. Where's the well, Kickstarter? I want to play. Yeah, <laughs> I, unfortunately, there's no Kickstarter yet. It seems all very you know trial. Very but university-ish. If, yes, but if it does become something, it'll be something interesting to follow. I'm, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, neat. Uh, if you're watching a video stream, uh, you will see a screenshot of, um, I think, the demo stuff in action. Um, so, yeah, that looks quite interesting. Then, this week, Gamescom is on. Holy crap, all the gaming news. Um, I'm going to keep it to just the, the, the local stuff, what we've, what we've, all the local stuff that's come out of it. Um, not that Gamescom, Gamescom is happening in Cologne in Germany. Yeah. They don't care about us there. Um, but uh, be- because of the <laughs> news being released there, our local guys are, are responding to what's happening. And so the first one, um, we've got an Xbox on screen, so let's talk about the Xbox news. Mm. There was a bit of a mix-up. Um, the, the, the more? <laughs> yeah, there was a report that the Xbox One, which is not slated for a 2013 release in South Africa, as far as I know, would be at Rage 2013, and there was a, a bit of a, a bit of a storm in a teacup about that, and um, f- uh, because <laughs> the, the, the guys were live reporting from Cologne, and I know as a as a writer covering events, you're often pressed for time. Um, but uh, it turned out that that was not, in fact, the message. The message was they're doing their best to okay. get the okay. Xbox okay. One to Rage 2013. But like well, a, a if, demo model, not not for sale. Yeah, sure. It's going to uh, be if just they can on show. It, at okay. least you can see like future tech yeah. happening. At because Rage. we can expect the PS4 to be there. Because that now they the, the news that's yeah. come out is that that's expected to go on sale in December. Uh, they're trying to get it out on the 6th of December. It's going, I know what I want for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be 6,299 Rand right Good now Lordy. is the price that they're looking at. It's cheaper than an Ubuntu Edge. <laughs> um, hey, whoa, depends whoa, on when whoa, you climbed whoa, on. Whoa. <laughs> and you're jumping the gun. Yes. You need to stick to the show notes. <laughs> um, but it depends on when you climbed on in the... 
uh, in, in the Ubuntu. You could have got the Ubuntu Edge for, I think, $600 if you climbed it's on earlier. It's still enough. a lot. It was 625 was the lowest that they went. Yeah. So, But it's interesting. Uh, I know a lot of folks are going to be unhappy about this high price because the, the dollar pricing is far lower than that. Um, it always gets me annoyed because yeah, it's, why? So it's supposed to be 399 Yes. Uh, Ish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ish. <laughs> yeah. Ish. Ish. <laughs> yeah, it's three ninety nine in the US, a uh, hundred dollars less than the Xbox One. Mm. Um, so if you translate th- that directly from rands to dollars right now, that should come to about four thousand rand. Um, but keep in mind that that US three ninety nine is excluding any taxes. It does not include sales tax. Does not include. Customs import duties. Not that cust- there should be any customs on this, but there will be some sort of duty, and there yeah. will be still uh, that, a, a even if you after you've added tax and maybe you know because bulk shipping you can fit a whole bunch of them together into one container, so it shouldn't set you or cost you that much. There's still about a thousand rand, if not more, markup on the device, and that's just. Ridiculous, in my opinion. Yeah, we don't know what they're going to land them here for, um, but the price will eventually come down. As How, I know, like, Xbox has live accounts and things that you can pay for. Is pay- PlayStation set to have anything similar? Yeah, um, the, the PlayStation Plus thing has been around for a while, and I'm actually a subscriber. What that gives you is a, f- is a bunch of free games, okay. and that gets updated weekly, I think. So they'll drop... Um, it's a lot like DSTV box office for those of you that have it. They <laughs> okay. drop some titles um, during the week and then they add new titles, except that it's all free. Whereas for DSTV box office, you have, have to pay to unlock and watch the movie. Well, it's not free. Uh, you did pay, what's it, 400 Rand for a year yeah, subscription? Yeah, sure, sure. You, you pay, it's a subscription it's like service, whereas box office right. is a rental service. Mm-hmm. So but it's okay. quite cheap if you think about it. 400 Rand for an entire year of PlayStation uh, Plus. And we got games that I would never have gotten to play otherwise, like yeah, and uh, you get you get any, of War and any, anything from indie titles to top okay, of the that's very to, nice. To, so to you get to try stuff, stuff out that yeah. you wouldn't normally go for, or, or you don't even like. I I don't actually buy PlayStation games. Um, yes, it means I don't get to play the latest and greatest, but um, oh well, I mean I'm I a generation minus one gamer anyway. So if yeah. you're willing to wait, you can get anything for cheap. Yeah. I so. would never, I would never have tried playing God of War. Um, if it if I wasn't bored one day and I was like I wonder what's on the PlayStation Plus thing and saw that Jan had downloaded God of War and I was like let me give this a shot and and I loved it played the game from start to finish. Okay. So yeah. Um, what seem what they seem to want to do is to um, incentivize PlayStation Plus subscriptions even more. Now I speak on a correction. We will have my gaming on next week um, at this stage. Uh, if uh, all the like if um, as things stand right now. And um, I think that they are going to require PlayStation Plus for multiplayer now, same as Xbox. Um, I will I just th- double check that. Remember something like that, but um, I couldn't confirm either. Yeah, if I'm wrong, <laughs> just moan at me on email or. Uh, Young was wrong. At yeah. Let's talk. And Keep we'll and we'll mention you in next week's show. Um, I'm moving us swiftly along. Um, scan the entire internet in under an hour, Luke. This sounds awesome too. Uh, so anyone who's familiar with the tool Nmap will know that you can do serious and cool, fun, dodgy scans upon other people's machines to see what they're running and uh, it's what also ports are active. It's also against the TOS of Shh, most don't, ISPs don't, in the country. Don't, don't say anything. <laughs> and um, um, I use it a lot at work, but that's that's another story altogether. <laughs> and um, what these guys so, have what done... What you do in your own private network is a whole different uh, ball of wax, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, so what these guys have done is that they have tweaked this a lot. Um, they have, from the ground up, they've redesigned it all. And the idea of it all is that – let me just find the article, sorry. Uh, what, they, what they do is that they know common kinds of responses from certain kinds of ports. So knowing what the response will be, if you ping a port, you can anticipate what the answer will be, allowing you to scan through a series of ports a hell of a lot faster than you normally would if you were actively pinging each port. So given a gigabit, no, 100 gigabit Ethernet connection to the internet, you can scan the entire web in under an hour. 100 gigabit? Yes. So this is like... this Not is a gigabit. No, 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 100 gigabit this Ethernet. Is only that's so this is like a university thing. kind of internet connection if you're in one of those well, weird, you, wacky you need locations. You monstrous hardware because you can't just slap in a gig E card and expect no, this to no, work. No, of course What were not. you saying about going to go claim some portals at Tux? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what's interesting about it is that 
not only can they see what's up, they can see now the adoption of a, things like HTTPS and how that's trending and, uh, you know, cool tech, things like that. But also, interestingly, like th- when a hurricane hit in uh, Miami, for instance, they could map how much damage was done to physical locations by how, you know, by which IPs could no longer be reached. And that's a very interesting idea as well. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the usual things like what's the internet sleep cycle, you know, so when are IPs up and down and so forth. And from a different article than the one I have in the show notes, uh, what they had actually done is they've also mapped 80% of the Tor uh, connection points. So if you were into security, uh, maybe Tor is no longer uh, so viable. There are ways that Tor can get around this particular scanning mechanic. Uh, but again, be be weary uh, because people are watching. Uh, <laughs> yeah, people are always watching. <laughs> um, then the only man to have visited Arrakis, um, and this is really for the guys watching the video stream. I think I'm going to bomb the link into the IRC if it hasn't been done already. Um, and I do not have a slide. And the the poor mixer doesn't have a slide. Um, the the link is in the is in the show notes if you want to grab that. Um, so what this what this is about? Um, it's on omnireboot.com, um, and it's uh, they they've do an archive series, um, and uh, this is an article about an artist that Frank Herbert, the author of Dune once said that he was the only artist to have visited the planet. And okay. um, the, it's, it, the, the, the reason I said that, that this is for, um, that this is for our video stream guys and, and why I'm not going to spend that too much more time on this is, um, is because the art speaks for itself. If you've ever read Dune, uh, if you've ever even played a Dune game, then I, I think the oh, art wow. describes or, or shows um, what the, the planet is going to be like. So we'll just sit here in, in silent. silent awe for just a few moments. So, there That's it is. That's very cool. Um, and uh, and a, a bit of a bit of silence if you were listening to the audio stream there to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to set you... Uh, to give you some rest and set you at ease and all that stuff. If you're like listening to us, one. to try and put you, put you to sleep. That image certainly puts me at ease. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the three sandworms attacking a settlement. The people are so dinky. It's just like, oh dear goodness, yeah. we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> very very cool. Then uh, Luke, you found something interesting. The Register, El Reg, celebrating 30 years of MIDI. So 30 years of of Famicom and 30 years of MIDI. Uh, it's it's more to do with the the specification for MIDI, and that makes it sound boring. But I mean, if you think about it today, like just about any band that you can think of is still using MIDI, and it's also still MIDI 1.0 specification. They have not updated the, the documents. Uh, I know that from about 2005, they were thinking of making an HD MIDI. Um, but that's another saga entirely. So the the article that the register are running is a it's quite lengthy and it's an interesting look at well how this MIDI spec came about. So they go from like the early days of the the Moog uh, synthesizers and uh, the history of like how Sony and America got together to make a s- technical specification for you know Sony sending Japan and so- Sony America. Yeah, yeah. Well. Some companies in the U.S. and some companies in Japan getting okay. together. So it's, it was an interesting. Yeah, I see Rollins know, there. Yeah. Omaha. So um, very interesting. So well, I would be. I would wonder, and I will get our um, our esteemed colleagues who are not in the show today to tell well, me. You can see it. Whether the, the, the desk uses MIDI. It does. Just by those two jacks here next to the green sound cable. Uh, uh, these two. Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, so what's interesting is that. Basically, they were all, what they're also getting at is that uh, if you were not using MIDI, if you didn't have the concept of MIDI as it would be today, the amount of equipment that you would need on stage for a typical band setup would be off the wall. 
Um, but also, the, the MIDI allowed for uh, devices to no longer have to synthesize their own sound, which is also very important. So you could have a keyboard that didn't play any sound by itself mm. and pipe it to uh, you know, a synth that could or yes. maybe mux it out to a, another device or whatever. So it's a description of the MIDI or the cabling and, and the bit rates and you know, the message format on how it works. Mm, yeah. Okay. Very, very, very cool. Um, then uh, the next, the next thing is um, heading. I think this is just something funny. I'm not going to give away the punchline. The mixer um, found this uh, last week, I think, and so we're just going to leave the link for you uh, in the in the show notes, and uh, and put up a put up a short sl- a slideshow of the actual comic. Um, I'm not going to read it out loud because that would not be funny. <laughs> That's one way to kill the joke, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I just I saw this and I've been, I don't know, I love this. It's adorable. I love the art style, the way it's been drawn. And I just absolutely love the punchline as well, which is brilliant and relevant to our previous topics without <laughs> saying much further. Yep. <clears throat> I don't want to. I don't want to say anything else. But we've left space in between the, the, this joke and uh, its relating topic, so as not to spoil anything. So enjoy. There you go. Dunkey is the name of the comic, and it is um, on steaksmoothie.com. Then some uh, sad news uh, for those of us who wanted one is that it doesn't look like the Ubuntu Edge is going to make it. Um, Let's see the stats. Let's go there. Yeah. So I've I've linked to UbuntuEdge.info, and um, they're uh, at twelve point four million, rounding generously. Yeah. Of the required thirty two million, they have twelve hours to go. Yeah. And so I think Hawkey's when we were just starting the stream, or oh, oh, sorry, when we were um, in, just climbing in IRC and getting the, ready to to start the stream, um, said that they needed like. 1.25 million an hour or something to make this work. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Hawkeys. It might have changed it already. But there is a live screen cap of the Ubuntu Edge's current total yeah. on Indiegogo, and this is what it's doing to the CPU. What? How is that <laughs> possible? Okay. <laughs> oh, Flash. I'll blame Flash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, very sad. So it looks like those of us that pledged are going to get our money back, but no Ubuntu Edge, which is... We'll have to see what happens, I guess. Yeah, It is quite Maybe. sad because in about the, the last week or so, I started looking into the Ubuntu Edge in more detail. And I have to say, even I, you know, I'm looking at this, I'm going, for, for $625 plus $30 for shipping to South Africa, this, this looks like an amazing device. And I just wish, I just wish that like in the last hour, Mark Shuttleworth would just haul out his checkbook and... I will fund you all. Fund the rest of them and just sell them. And sell them at a profit. Sell them at the eight hundred dollars that he was going to yes, charge for them. Yes. <laughs> hey, well, all we need is we need more ecosystems. I mean, I would I would be pro this any day. I hope it happens, but I, I'm guessing it's it's not. Yeah. Um, well, we'll see. Um, I think everybody is kind of banking on a last minute sugar daddy to make it happen. Uh, because that's the well, only thing that can make there's it happen. way too big a gap. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, then, in happier news for consumers, AfriHost Mobile has launched. If you've been following the news, they um, are piggybacking on MTN, um, probably using some sort of a- APN product from them, uh, some sort of wholesale APN probably. Um, and what makes this attractive is their initial deal for Afrio subscribers was off the wall. They were offering yep. five gigs of data for 145 rand a month. That comes to 29 rand a gig, which is what Afrio was charging for ADSL, which I is think, awesome. three or four years ago. Say that well, it's like two years ago. Five gigs for 145 rand per month. They call it a two a two gig package plus three gig. I don't I don't know why it's two plus three, but it comes to five gigs. They give they give you a bonus three gigs that of data. Is, that is amazing yep. because I I'm currently paying ninety something rand yeah. for five hundred megs. Ouch. On even as despicable as C- Cell C is, they're, they're, uh, the price you pay per gig isn't that bad. No, I'm on I'm on Ata. 
Yeah. Um, so uh, already something quite interesting to link um, the, what we're talking about now uh, from MTN to our previous topic, the uh, the Ubuntu Edge, is um, Paul Huell from RC has um, actually uh, highlighted that MTN actually sits on the uh, alliance um, with Mark Shuttleworth. Um, he he started not the not not the open handset alliance, but like a similar kind of um, alliance of carriers and uh, OEMs to um, to help with Ubuntu Phone um, or Ubuntu Touch or whatever they're calling it now. Um, so yeah, uh, just to add that in with while we're talking about MTN and AfriHost. Now, what makes AfriHost's offering even more compelling, as if the twenty nine rand a gig wasn't, is that this is not a contract. This is month to month. So on top of it. Um, they ran a special and on launch day. Unfortunately, by the time you watch the show, it would definitely be yesterday. 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 Um, <laughs> and um, I didn't buy it because we really don't need it. But what they what the, they gave you a free MiFi device yes. the second you signed up. So you can get a MiFi device worth a thousand rand on a month to month deal uh, for 145 rand a month um, for five gigs of data a month. And you can cancel the next month. And I want you sit it. with a thousand rand free Wi Fi. I wanted it. <laughs> you still might have an opportunity because uh, the server was the so th- overloaded on the first day Ooh. that they extended the offer a little. So no, but that, 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 that must have been done. Back. Okay. They, 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 they sold, I think, five, no, uh, uh, what's it, 4,500 Wi Fi yeah. devices in total. They're gone. <laughs> they're I would gone. imagine that they're gone. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't need another Wi Fi device. We've got. Plenty, most, but most people I want, are, I want that deal. Yeah. I want. I'm. I'm porting. That's it. I'm, I'm sold. I'm porting. <laughs> and most people remember. The, Besides, I mean, I'm. I'm piggybacking on MTN most of the time anyway because the ATA signal um, at my work is so terrible. So, hello, every host mobile. <laughs> you have a customer. <laughs> Yep, so not a not a bad Loyalty deal at all. Loyalty is an awesome thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be interesting to see how this holds up. Um a common argument for not decreasing prices to this to these ludicrously low levels is that it will impact network quality yeah. in the long term. Everybody jumps on board and then the mm. saturates. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see This is very reminiscent about how they would go about uh, in the past for like the ADSL as well. I mean, it caused some serious hairy stuff. Yeah, sell below cost, yeah. gain customers, make your money back later kind of thing. Well, and also Afrios, kill your network slightly, yeah, but then... Afrio sunk a lot of money. Work yeah. that out. Um, it, it, uh, I think they, they inflated a little by using retail pricing, but it, let, let's imagine the MiFi devices cost them 500 Rand. Multiply that by the 4,500 devices they sold. I don't and think you, a MiFi device costs 500 Rand. But no, anyway. it's probably much le- It's probably a, a little bit more than that. No, it's probably less. A MiFi device? Mm. No, 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 no. It, like it, it is sold for 1,000 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, um, I think it's one two or so ish. Yeah. Um, anyway, but the, the bottom line is is that that alone comes to like two point two five million, um, just in in costs. So, um, and then on top yeah. of that, they, they they must be subsidizing this bandwidth um, out of something. So, they they are putting up a lot of money to get started in the mobile space. So I hope it pans out for them. Uh, it's going to be interesting. That brings us to the end of the quick geek. And we're going to talk about some events coming up. Um, so since we missed last week's show, that means you're not going to have as much warning on these as we would have liked to give you. But um, some of the events that we've mentioned before is the Dark Carnival Geek Fest on Saturday, the 31st of August. Which is totally not going to be cool and everybody should totally not go to it. Why? Because SFD is on the same day. <laughs> Uh-huh. Everybody should come to SFD. <laughs> All right. Uh, tickets for the Geek Fest is available on web tickets anyway. There's another Geek Fest in, at the Goldfields Kennel Club on, at, on Boeing Street in Bedford View. Then Wait, Two Geek Fests on the same day. Yeah, I think it's Geek Fest. It's probably deliberate. It's Geek Fest, and they're having it in two venues. Yeah. Oh, okay. They, yeah. they, so they've added a second venue because it was originally only in Bedford View. Yes. Okay. Um, and... Um, then Software Freedom Day 2013 is also Saturday the 31st. It's being held at WITS. The reason Software Freedom Day has been moved to the 31st of August because usually it would happen. Well, um, it's actually scheduled for September, a, a Saturday September in September. September 21st is the global Software yeah. Freedom Day so date. In South Africa, we moved it up because Richard Stallman is coming. Uh, okay, Did you want to tell sense. us about Richard Stallman? You look very excited. Uh, I'm very excited because I was involved on the committee. 
um, who brought him in. Um, I spent the last three weeks working out itineraries, uh, flights, um, arranging with him. I've had phone calls with him, um, dealing with our, our teams. And what's very exciting about it is he's not only coming to Joburg. Uh, he will be speaking in Bloemfontein on the 29th at the University of the Free State. He will be speaking at SFD um, on the 31st, along with a really awesome lineup of other speakers. Yes, not to take away from the rest of SFD. The SFD is not just Richard Stallman. There's going to yes. be a bunch of geeks from House for Hack, where we're streaming from, and elsewhere that are going to be talking about all kinds of awesome stuff. Among them is uh, uh, Rep Rap Morgan Maker. Um, oh, oh, that's, yeah, who, who won who, the Goddard Prize. Yeah, for 20,000 US dollars for his design. Um, and Toby Korean, um, who, for those of you, since we were talking about the NSA and privacy a bit later, for those of you who are worried about such things, is going to be talking about his prison break, how he divorced been, himself I've from been Google. I've reading that religiously to see what, what, you know, what's been potting there. So I'll, I'll be curious to see how he concludes his prison break. His prison break, yep. Yeah. He says he's, he's out now from, from what I've seen from his tweets. So he succeeded. So it's going to be interesting to see what his... Uh, to see how, like how he proposes people yeah. do it from his yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be cool. And uh, yeah, back to Richard Stallman. If you do not live in Bloemfontein or you can't attend SFD um, on the 31st, he will be speaking. Let me just get the dates right in my head. He was speaking in Pretoria at CETA's head office in uh, Erasmus Kloof on the 3rd, uh, but it's during the day. Uh, it's 2 or 3 p.m. And then he will be in Cape Town on Thursday the 5th at UCT um, in the Leslie Social Sciences Building. And then he will be in Durban on the 6th, 6th, yes, Friday the 6th uh, at UKZN. And then he flies off again. So, yeah. Catch him while you can. Catch him while you can. Uh, attendance to all of these events is free, uh, but you will have to register that you want to go. So um, every city has its own registration page. Um, a lot of them are e on Eventbrite. But yeah, just uh, just Google and you'll you'll find information. But everybody should come to SFD. Cool. Who cares about stupid geek fest and people in awesome <laughs> costumes? And bias. Hey, wait, wait, bias. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> All the bias. All right. So I um, was gonna go to geek fest and then we had to go and put SFD on the same day. Yeah. It's unfortunate how things work out. <laughs> yep. And then National Wills Week. Um, so National Wills Week is a week-long event where lawyers around South Africa from various law firms offer their services to create a will for you free of charge to help you write it and set it up and all of that. And it's supposed to be the first week of September, but when I uh, went and checked out the exact information today on their site – it turns out it's only going to be in October, so we'll remind people again later. But in short, if you don't have a will, you really should get one. It doesn't take very long. It's not very complicated, and it will save your family and your friends a lot of sort of… Hassling. A lot yeah. of hassle, uh, yeah. So you should, you should do that. But we'll talk about that again in a, in a later show when it's close to the time. Great stuff. Cool. Then uh, one last thing I wanted to mention is iWeek is also coming up in, sep in September. Nine to the – not also – is actually coming up in September now that – iWeek. iWeek. iWeek is can, – can I, can I spoil it? Can you, I spoil go it? For She's it. great go at this. It. Do yeah. not ever ask her about anything Game of Thrones related. Okay. Anyway, you may go. I don't remember most of the details <laughs> of Game of Thrones. But I haven't watched it. iWeek, Thursday. Not only is my broadband's RPM speaking, but – Cory Doctorow. Huzzah. Yeah, pretty cool. For those I'm of you signed up. Who Put in day of leave. <laughs> who don't I'm know going. who Cory Doctorow is, he's a science fiction author, but he's also an anti-copyright activist. Um, so he's with the EFF, and he's also the blogger in the cape who flies in the balloon and is famous from XKCD Comics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he blogs for Boing Boing, uh, amongst other things. Um, so, yeah, that, that, is, that promises to be, to be very interesting. Um, some very... Uh, libertarian speakers coming to South Africa to talk tech, to talk tech here. So that's that's going to be cool. You should also it's need to right register place. for iWeek, and but there is limited um, space available. Yeah, it's free because of the sponsors, yeah. but you have to register. Um, as with the My Broadband Conference, which we now haven't mentioned, but the My Broadband Conference is also coming up uh, in October. 
Um, so keep that in mind as well. You also have to register for that. Also covered by sponsors. But in order to cater, we have to know how many people are coming. So do register. Same goes for iWeek. Register. Otherwise, you won't have a seat. What, uh, what's great about the iWeek registration is you can register for just um, certain sessions. So like me, I'm not going to the whole iWeek. I'm only attending the Thursday morning session so I can listen to Corey Doctorow and oh, RPM nice. speak. And you can, I can individually go and tell them, listen, I'm going to be there for session one, session two, and lunch on Thursday. So I like that they have given you op- the opportunity to do that because sometimes you find you have to stay a whole day just to listen to the one person well, you're looking you, or you, for. Or you have to register for the entire week or the yeah. entire event, and meanwhile, you only intend to go on a single one day. day. Yeah. So. Yes. Um, it, it also, the, the whole event isn't geared to everybody. There's some of the event that's going to be interesting to ISPs, wireless ISPs, some of the event that's going to be interesting to registrars, domain registrars, and then there's some of the event that's going to appeal to a wider technology audience like the day that Corey Doctorow speaks. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so uh, iWeek is about more than Corey Doctor, so check out the rest of the program as well, especially if you work in IT. Um, there might be other days that, that you might want to get off work as well. Um, that's nice. all the events we have listed in our calendar at the moment. Um, if you have events that you think we didn't cover or you're like, my event is not mentioned and I demand justice, then email I demand justice at let's talk network.tv. <laughs> With details of your event, uh, you know, date – Times, venues, a uh, link to a website or something, and we'll add Anything it for help. you. Yeah. Cool, cool. I now have right rights on the calendar, so Very I can nice. do that for you too. Cool. And uh, since this is uh, not necessarily a professional show, I'd like to segue a little to answer some questions from IRC. Segways are awesome. Before we I'm sure the word segue, is segue, my bad, before yes. James lynches me again. <laughs> um, we even again. looked it up the last time, and then we said, Yan, you stooge. <laughs> um, before we get into what geekery is this, um, I would like to talk about what's happening in IRC. So first up... Um, Paul Huell mentioned that there will apparently there are still thirty MiFi devices up for grabs for tweets. I don't know exactly what that means, um, but the mixer is already instructions, please already on Twitter <laughs> to try and find out what that is. Um, so yeah, you might have to tweet something at them, uh, like why you must have um, a free host mobile. I think in India because have I have many followers. <laughs> and then, Sorry. and then, like you have to use a certain hashtag or something. I don't know if those winners have already been chosen, though. I don't. If Paul Hughes says they haven't, then they haven't. But because sure. five hundred megs a month is not enough, <laughs> especially not on mobile. Jeez. <laughs> um, all right. So and this Paul- is with Wi-Fi, using Wi-Fi at home and Wi-Fi at work. I still am I'm not. You go out and hack a lot, don't you? <laughs> all right, and then I'm on BlackBerry. And then, um, uh. <laughs> other things, other things from uh, IRC is um, whether RMS is going to be coming to Grahamstown. Uh, no Grahamstown. And nope, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, we added the Bloemfontein leg at the last minute as well at uh, great expense because you want You think telecom is a, is a monopoly? Uh, try try get a flight from Johannesburg to Bloemfontein. <laughs> <laughs> and that is all I will say. And then um, just a funny from McD EF, uh, EFF question mark. He belongs to Juju's party. <laughs> not that EFF. Not the economic like, freedom fighters. Like not that WWF. <laughs> I see the WWF had to change its this name face to WWE. Is for you. <laughs> I'm really glad that the, that uh, con- that the that environmental conservative. Conservancy guys won out on the logo fight. <laughs> Over the wrestling guys. Why? Wrestling is awesome. EFF stands for Electronic Freedom, Freedom, Freedom Foundation. Front- Frontier, Frontier Foundation. My bad. Something, uh, something, 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 like something, something. something. Electronic something, front- something. Electronic Frontier Foundation. And every time you buy a Humble Indie Bundle without checking the sliders, you donate to them. So thank you. Um, then I'm going to take us into a what geekery is this? So, first up, and I have no links in the show notes. I apologize for that. Maybe I'll add some in by the time the edit goes live. But uncapped, unlimited, unmetered, and limitless, what should we call FUPT services? So, um, FUPT? FUPT. Yes, I'm not swearing and I'm not. Uh, I'm please <laughs> define FUP yes, for the rest of us. FUP. So, FUP is fair use policy, ah, sometimes okay. called acceptable use policy. And um, MWeb caused a bit of a stir in the bad way recently when it announced that it is going to clamp down on the top 3% of its customer base, saying that they are abusing its system and that they will be throttled. Um, 
to improve ex the experience for other users on the network. I like uh, that image, by the way. Uh, I Googled uncapped and ripped that. So <laughs> apologies for any copyright infringement. It's completely unintended. <laughs> if it's your image, let me know and I'll yeah, credit yeah. you. Um, cool. And... Um, so uh, th this raised a number of questions. Um, so the conspiracy theory I allude to in the forum posts and the, and the email I sent out um, uh, for, for today's show is that um, my broadband forum, I started uh, putting two and two together. And, um, wow, that's really smart. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Mixer, <laughs> and and um, and said and found that like some users were complaining. They're like, I've used 160 gigs, and this is my usage history, and I've been slapped with a letter of warning. And here's another user, and they use 160 gigs a month, but they didn't get one, and so but they asked. Wasn't it also between the difference between the normal uncapped and the premium uncapped, and those kinds of? It could it could very well, well have been, but the question that was asked, rather than all those questions, um, because it's it's difficult. I mean. Yes. They've got a number of tiers of products, and they've got num uh, different so speeds. How do you compare apples to apples? Uh, um, uh, but, but, the, but the question that was asked and that people wanted to get to the bottom of was, are you a DSTV subscriber? Because if you are a DSTV subscriber, then maybe they'll be more lenient so that you can get at box office content, for example, or use DSTV catch-up on your yeah. ADSL connection. Um, so um, we asked MWeb outright about this, <laughs> and they said no. Whether you're a DSTV subscriber, uh, whether you, what, you read the Argus or something, uh, and, or whether you shop in Kal Kalahari.net, makes no difference. You're treated the same. Um, but that's awful because, I mean, I'm a, I'm a gamer, and they have – MWeb has Steam servers. And so if I'm using their servers – then uh, that that's probably was, count against me. That was a really big complaint um, I saw on, uh, on, on the forum, which I don't know if it's been addressed yet, but um, yeah, the guy's saying, listen, I, uh, there, was a Steam, there was a Steam holiday sale, so yes. I bought a ton of games. Yes, my connection is running 24-7, but that's because I'm downloading games at 12 yes. gigs a pop. But it's to your servers, it's local traffic, and you're not differentiating. You're just yes. counting my usage as general usage rather than counting it as to your own servers, for frack's sakes. Um, I would also be disgruntled yeah, about that. So, so there, there, are, there have been some disgruntled customers. Dis, uh, they're disgruntled for varying reasons, yes. some of them more legitimate than others. And some of them of very legitimate, like this one. Um, so it's like this one. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Like Sad Panda, for those of you who are not watching the video stream, uh, Mixer put up a cute Sad Panda for us. <laughs> now, interestingly, I, I had a conversation, and I'm going to throw in a whole bunch of stories, th telecommunication stories throughout the week now. I had an interesting conversation with Alan Not Craig Jr., who resurfaced recently after – um, being uh, like, like after it emerged that he was involved in a free Wi-Fi project for the city of Chwane Metropolitan Municipality. He is now the founder of a nonprofit called Project Isizwe, and this is after he was ousted at World of Avatar. His, his okay. um, uh, I want to call it like a holding company almost, like a startup incubator company type thing um, that held Mixit, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And so he's been ousted out of Mixit, out of World of Avatar. Uh, he's basically unemployed. And um, like he made a lot of jokes to that effect as well. And we had a conversation about this and he said, the thing is you have to, you have, to have a, a FUP in place from the get-go. People must know what they're getting and then there won't be unhappiness like this. Right Especially now, if you detail the FUP. I mean – what is my limit? Yeah. How am I breaching something if I can't tangibly see what I'm breaching? Yeah. And so what's interesting here is that uh, – so obviously for the free Wi-Fi project, he's, he's um, outlined a very strict FUP from the get-go. It's yeah. one megabit per second is the speed that you will get over the Wi-Fi and 200 megs a day for free is what you will get. Um, I assume that there will be facility to buy bandwidth after that when you've run out of your free quota. Um, and uh, so, so there's that. But then interestingly today, Neotel launched Uncapped LTE. Uh, it's aimed at the business market. It's, okay. it's a little expensive. Um, but they detailed a very, uh, a very, very simple, straightforward FUP. It's uncapped in the sense that they will never cut you off. But if you use 50% of your theoretical maximum for a month, they will throttle you to half your speed. So in other okay. words… 
Um, they so they obviously budget to 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 find out you know where the where the profit margin is, and so. That makes that sense. That will be the when you theoretical up limit. Fifty percent of your data throughput, then they throttle your speed to fifty percent of what it is, and so that means that if if you max out your line for the rest of the month, you will only make up the Half. other fifty percent, no, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Yep. so that that makes sense. Um, and um, and it's interesting. The uh, I don't want to name names because I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but it sounds like this is the model that most providers use. This is what they all use anyway to okay. determine who's an abuser and who's not. So um, obviously people had, you know, IS uses star ratings and people, co- you know, compare you to the average users on the network and so on and so forth. Um, but this is a very clear cut indicator to find out whether you are going to impact another user, right? Okay. Um, is how much, how, how much, much of your theoretical using. maximum yeah, have you okay. used in the month? Um, so, um, uh, and so uh, Paul Hewlett just corrected me. Venture capital firm is uh, the correct term for World of Avatar. Okay. Um, anyway, and so I, I thought that was quite interesting. Um, and so those those amounts are, are up on the My Broadband website for those of you that are interested. Um, let me actually go and find that article and read it out to you. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, th- so now the question is, and some folks have taken issue with – Uncapped services being called uncapped when network operators or uh, internet service providers reserve the right to throttle you, to shape you, and to even cut you off when you abuse the network. Um, with abuse being defined fairly loosely as impacting the network experience for other users, right? So my question is, what do we call it if not yes. uncapped? Because, yes, all of these terms seem to make it sound like that it's unlimited. Yes. yes. Um, but they never question. say unlimited. Yes. Well, um, and, and they've been careful. Most guys have been well, careful about the word. Sort of unmeted, but not quite. Yeah, but it's not unmeted yeah. because they meter to find out if you're being abusive. Yes. Right? So unmeted would also be… It's a difficult term to nail down. Yeah, yeah. to, to but quick but sandy territory. the definition that you just gave… Um, I don't see what is wrong with the term uncapped then. Yeah. Because literally You're not all it capped, means is just gonna there's no you. cap on yes, the amount. Yes. But now, here's where things get hairy, right? Like people are unhappy with MWeb. Check this out. MTN's discontinued uncapped product worked thusly. They call it uncapped and they call it a fair use limit. But they, I think, had a 3 gig account and a 10 gig account, if memory serves, um, at two different price points. And um, the one, when you hit your 3 gig limit... They throttled you to 128k, oh, wow. kbps. That is oh, wow. like I, it's like, like double s- dial-up. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> slow. <laughs> like if you want a definition of slow, that's it. And um, and the 10 gig one similarly, except you get a higher cap. Uh, you get 10 gig um, f- for. But they call it a fair use limit. Yeah. Um, and then there's also a fudgery of the of the phrasing fair use limit in the industry now, which I don't want to yes. get into. But they're using this on BIS where they're referring to the new capped versions of BIS as having fair use limits. And I'm going, it's a cap. it's capped. Because you're charging me when I go outside of that. Anyway. If it's a a, a, a hard limit, at which point when you reach it, you you do not have data services anymore, then it is capped. It is no longer uncapped. I would think it would still be fine is maybe if you got an email or something from your ISP that said, listen, buddy, uh, slow, slow down. You know, <laughs> what are we going to do it for yes. you? Yeah, right. I mean, it, maybe if you got to the point of like seventy-five percent of your fifty percent, your initial fifty percent, they should just give you a warning. Yeah, hey, they just say like, "Slow down, buddy." Uh, <laughs> the internet is going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, so some um, some interesting feedback from the uh, from the RC before I move us along is that. Um, the problem that a lot of the guys in the forum have with what MWeb is doing and what other guys are doing for that matter, MWeb is just sort of the Sonderbook. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is that in English? Um, right. There's like a… a sun goat. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, uh, it's an ancient uh, religious uh, idiom that comes from putting all your sins on a goat and slaughtering it. Anyway, um, <laughs> then… Um, <laughs> Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so um, the the problem here is that that people see is that there is a threshold. They can see there's a threshold, but MWeb is not disclosing it. Yes. 
And um, well, pos- cleverly so on their part. Well, I suppose. possibly the reason is that the thresholds will move. Well, I would think whatever price that they're paying per gigabyte, they don't want to basically hint you as to what that could be. Uh, so they're keeping it very mum. Mm, mm. The show is totally going to be entitled um, something, 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 and the goat of sin. <laughs> um, so uh, Paul Paul Huell um, from IRC is saying um, it's also a case of exceeding a fair use figure because they don't properly monitor it. It, it is not deemed abuse. Yep. Nobody else with a decent customer base is doing this, um, is the argument. Um, so, uh, scapegoat is the word we're looking for for Sonderbook. <laughs> Thanks, See, I was geez. thinking scapegoat, but I'm like, it doesn't sound like the same thing. I oh, screw it. Yeah. <laughs> goat of sin and, is and, just so much good. And sin. more feedback from IRC. The bigger issue is also that MWeb advertised it as an unthrottled service to begin with. It was with. the reason I actually chose them because initially I went through all of the ISPs and I said, oh, these guys have floating windows or whatever you call them, then they rolling you. windows. And now they said, no, 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 no. We've changed the terms. Well, hold a minute. You know, I didn't agree to the new terms. How can you just charge me now? Yeah, and because now, the, the previous terms you signed had a clause in that said yes, you may that they change could. users any time without yes. yes. notifying you. So. Yeah, and they've at least notified people now through a letter well, that made everybody irate. I suppose for uh, those that received it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, and now exactly as people in RC are pointing out, they have changed their, effectively their terms of service. Yes. They've they've said that now we will throttle you in order to enforce our fair use policy. And so we've changed the nature of the service. And there's no real way around that. If they say, we will never throttle you, we will sure. only shape certain traffic more heavily um, when, it is, when it is becoming a burden to the network, peer-to-peer comes to mind, um, video streaming comes to mind. Um, the fun things of the web. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and, um, and yeah, so I guess that's a, that's a fair point, is that that's, that has changed. Um, and what's making people even unhappier is something I think we alluded to either earlier in the show or uh, before the, the show um, officially started was, is the fact that MWeb's cancellation is end of the next month. So yes. I, it's but even, even before this, I'm busy, I'm busy switching my, uh, my internet over to wireless. And so I canceled my MWeb account before this whole thing blew up, but also at the start of August. Like I'm talking this way like b- the second of August. Yeah, like the, yeah. between the second and sixth of August, I cancelled my account, and it will only be terminated at the end, end of September. September. And there's nothing you can do about it because that's what you sign up for. Um, so uh, it it will look uh, before I lay this completely at MWeb's feet. I must I must say up front I don't know who else does this. If anybody else does this, I will look into it though uh, because I'm curious. I have to admit, um, because I have uh, inside information. Uh, IS Ignite does not work that way. If you no. cancel any time during the month before your billing date, they cancel. Every and host is the same. Works that way? Yep. Yes. yes. Um, it's, not a, it's not a difficult thing to change in your, in your billing system. MWeb has just decided that their policy is to make it run to the end of the following month, and they're sticking to their policy even though it is obtuse and obscure. And but also I'm not a fan of is like though. every other crowd seems to – you can you – can, Close your account online. You can just do it there, there, and then. Now with M-Web, M-Web obscure... you have to mail them or fax them or uh, what? Yeah, yeah, at least it's address. mail. You don't have to fax them at least. But yeah. yeah, they they send you a form. You've got to sign the form and then send it back to them. I don't remember if you, what else you have to send back to them, like proof of identity or something. And then they cancel the service. Yeah. Um, all right. So here's it's what you retarded. Yeah, <laughs> it's silly. Don't don't use that as a slur. But yes, it's pretty <laughs> stupid. Um, then um, uh, what you've all been waiting for? <laughs> if you've been waiting bored for these numbers, here are the figures Neotel gave us as their thresholds, which someone at the event reckoned is used across the whole industry for one megabit per second. It is 134 gigabytes, right? Now what okay. you do is you just multiply that through is what it looks like. So for 2 megabits per second, it's 268. For 5 megabits per second, it's 670, 671. So there's obviously a fraction that's getting rounded up here that I don't know about. Yep. And um, at 10 megabits per second, it is 100 and uh, w- 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 sorry, 1324 gigabytes. So 1.3 odd Terabytes. terabytes. 
um, before what are you, people doing you hit that on threshold. the internet that you can <laughs> hit that? And I, I mean, I know what you're doing, but why are you doing it? <laughs> Stop it! Um, uh, look, I've it's used YouTube. I've used six hundred, um, uh, so I've I've hit this threshold for four meg account, it, <laughs> like, and that was a heavy steam month. <laughs> that was a bad steamer. The highest was, I've done is a Yeah, speak to our that, credit that, card. It was a bad steamer. Yeah, Did that, you also or, drop or like a format or a format month? Like I format my PC and then I re-download all my stuff all that right. I From haven't done. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> From the cloud. Um, yeah, that wasn't. Sorry, now that you've mentioned the cloud, I have to mention the fact that part of the Microsoft uh, press briefing. So the Xbox One news that we talked about earlier um, in the Quick Geek. Um, part of the. Uh, the the thing was yeah they're gonna they're gonna have um, uh, something in the cloud and um, oh cloud hosted cloud hosted services I think for Battlefield or something you're like hang Wait, on a second now? so are you go- they call no, what was worse about it they called it dedicated cloud servers and we're going hang do on you, do you not uh, you can have one or the other yes. because either you're distributing the load of that server across multiple servers and hopefully or multiple and multiple preferably <laughs> multiple data centers before you call it cloud yes. Or it's a dedicated server. Which one is it? <laughs> no, anyway. One dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. yes. Or is it? Uh, or what? Or what? You do you really mean is multiple dedicated servers in multiple data centers, like it is now? Yes, that one. I picked that one. Anyway. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, yes. If you want me to go on a rant, let's just mention the word cloud. Um, so to say, cloud is the new green because <laughs> everything used to be green. Now everything's in the cloud. Yeah. S- so. Something, something else I, I picked up on um, at, at the end of last week, Telcom issued a press statement to say that people using their D-Link routers, unspecified model, D-Link modems, um, might be experiencing connectivity issues. And what they need to do – I did now, love this. Yes. Now read between the lines. What they need to do is log in, change the default support account password to something else – and reset the DNS settings from whatever they were, which was typically to set to a static IP address, to point to get them from the WAN. So in other words, Telcom supplies you with DNS servers. What happened, do you think? Run us through. What do you think, Luke? What happened oh, here? Dear. <laughs> so I'm guessing their DNSs must have changed at some point. Or if you're, if you're using a different ISP to Telcom, then if your DNSs are fixed, then… Uh, it's, uh, it's even more nefarious than that. Uh, so oh. the default support okay, account… Okay, I forgot about the password. Yeah, yeah, so the default support account what, what was accessible from the WAN. And yes. um, not so long ago in May, I did an article about this exact exact problem. I brought this problem to the attention of both D-Link and Telcom. And the router in question is the D-Link 2750U. I have that one. <laughs> <laughs> so you should probably go and take now, a look at this. Basically, I, what I did is when I bought the thing, I just wiped it and turned off all the bad things anyway. So it's okay. no problem. Cool. I'll use it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> so um, what happens is, is when these things come... Um, with the stock firmware, yes. and even when you flash the firmware, by the way, the default passwords remain. They're not yes. overwritten by the new firmware. Um, so you have to go in and change the yes. stuff unless you go and load a, a different – like open firmware. Unloaded the module. Like but yeah, yeah, yeah. O- 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 open, open WRT. WRT. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what happened is there's this web service – they call it the Google for hackers. It's called Shodan HQ. <laughs> With, That's a cool name. Yeah. <laughs> I am Shodan. Yeah, Look yeah, at yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Fleshling or whatever she says. Um, and w- with a very simple query, you can narrow down to these routers um, on a country level. You say country ZA and you search for the um, web server micro HTTPD. Up pops a whole list of D-Link 2750 use. Um, from what I could see, only them. Almost nothing else um, was accessible on the, on the internet using micro HTTPD. Then, um, though I uh, did, may not admit to doing this myself, <laughs> what you could do <laughs> yes. is simply click on that. It will take you to the router login page. You select a user from a drop down. You did <gasps> not even oh, have no. to know the username and then type in the default password. And you're in. And so... Um, That's even more horrifying than I can yeah. imagine. Now, now um, 
a lot of people are worried about bandwidth theft yes. or, or, or uh, cap theft, we should say. All right. um, cap so, theft is the least of my worries. Yeah. yeah. So from this, from what, from what I could see from the screenshots and stuff, um, you, can't, you can't see anything. So you can't get a guy's – you can see a guy's ADSL username, I think, but you can't see their password. What you can do is change their DNS settings. Now, this opens you up. Man in the middle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this opens you up to a bunch of attacks. Among them, man in the middle, uh, DNS cache poisoning. Right. Uh, because instead of having to poison your ISP's cache, they now can poison the cache Their of own. something that, yeah, yeah. that they've got access to, right? Yeah. And another thing that was quite interesting that came up was an increase in DNS amplification attacks in South Africa. And apparently, this is being used for that. I'm not clear on exactly how, but I would assume the way this works is you make a DNS request. You're like www.google.com. It requests google.com from this DNS, comes back with the IP address. But before that, it modifies the DNS request um, with the um, source um, it adds a whole bunch of it, yeah. It, it, so it, it it adds the uh, a source and yeah. probably changes it to an any request, and then what it does is it sends a whole bunch of DNS responses back to a server it wants to take off the internet. Yes. This is uh, the reason it's called the DNS amplification attack is because it amplifies a distributed denial of service attack. So everyone in South Africa who runs these routers who had their routers hacked were effectively enlisted into a distributed denial of service attack and you didn't amplified even know about it. through a DNS. Yep. So so you helped you got hacked invariably to help hack no. someone else. Uh, not hack but, but wipe them off the net. So. Yes. Um, is one of the is one of the things that definitely happened. I have confirmation there will be an article in my broadband on this shortly. Uh, I have insane. confirmation from CyberSmart's Laurie Fialkov who experienced this exact problem on his ADSL network and had to take drastic steps to fix it. Um, oh, who wow. said that he saw these exact IP addresses that people were complaining about in the my broadband forum. And so the people who are reporting those IP addresses were probably being used in a DNS amplification attack. What Laurie said he did which even if you get hacked this way um, would still make it so that you're not complicit in this crime um, is he actually makes it so that you um, uh, so the DNS requests from their network um, are, are black holed or something like, but basically what, like the first thing they did was they made it so that um, DNS requests would not go off their network. Okay. So, all right. So in other words, um, uh, and, and, on, and, and then the other thing that they did, they made it so that you as a CyberSmart ADSL subscriber may not use a DNS that they have not approved. So in other words, if your router gets hacked, then uh, your internet goes off. And, oh, wow. and, and Laurie said that the reason they did that is because it's a much easier thing to debug than slow internet. So what used to happen... So people would call up and say, I have slow internet. And what he realized was happening was their upstream was saturating. And their uh, routers, okay. uh, the routers themselves weren't saturating because the bandwidth isn't enough. Um, but their bandwidth was physically being saturated by this. Um, and so it was slowing them down. Um, and so he said, okay, no. Um, firstly, he needs to stop this thing dead in its tracks. And so… Just he, kick them off the web entirely. Yeah, yeah, just make it so that wow. um, even if you're hacked, any requests – to these poisoned or attacked DNSs um, will not happen. They will just drop those packets at their routers. So, uh, yeah. That must have been fun to debug. Yeah, yeah. So this is quite interesting. I thought this, is, this was quite, quite an interesting thing. That's an interesting hack. Um, yeah. What I found a bit sad was D-Link, when I asked them about this in May, told me that they do not ship routers with remote management enabled. Telcom now, their press release on Friday says exactly the opposite thing. Odd. Yes. yes. When I asked them about it again, they declined to comment and said that they have an NDA in place with Telcom and that I should ask oh. them. So, yeah. <laughs> um, Telcom! And Telcom has already given their comment. <laughs> Um, so Telcom has said, so but basically what D-Link have said by saying that they have an NDA and they're not going to answer any questions is that they've said that Telcom's word must stand. And Telcom's word is these routers did ship with road management enabled. So either D-Link didn't know their product or they lied. Is the only two options I can think of. Which brings me to the question of why do they feel they need to enable 
that uh, remote administration in the first place? Um, the support account in particular is apparently for ISPs to log in and be able to make changes to their subscribers' info. Like info that, that uh, the subscriber doesn't necessarily care if someone changes. Um, until I will argue go, about that. <laughs> until things go wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's why. Uh, is okay. So that, yeah. So you could just ISP do a little access. bit of a fix it from their side to see what, yeah. Yeah. But having one password across the whole ISP. Yeah, that sounds like a win routers, to me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say that that didn't work out well. Anyway, um, I'm going to take us into our kicker. Luke, you found this. We never end the show on a negative note, like having your router hacked and being uh, enlisted into a distributed denial of service attack. So instead, we'll look at Doctor Who Easter eggs, which I think is awesome. So it's a, it's a Doctor Who Easter egg on Google Maps. And uh, there's an oddly labeled uh, police box somewhere in London that if you click on, has a... Uh, street view and if you click on that street view you are taken inside of the TARDIS and you can go and look at it in great and wonderful detail that's awesome that is that is very awesome <laughs> the stuff they have time for at Google but uh, what makes it a little so funny is if you go and look at the review for this address uh, the comments there are actually quite amusing as well so th there's there's meta jokes there as well uh, it's it's rad fun <laughs> good stuff that is a that is a very pretty TARDIS. Yeah, it's very detailed. If you look at it, uh, you can see that they've like CG touched up some of the sections of it. But I mean, it, it's pretty true to the the Matt Smith Doctor Who as it is at the moment. Okay. Uh, cool for all the Whovians out there. Yeah, we're thinking of you. <laughs> I think that's the end of our show. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Uh, Luke, where can people find you? I am on Twitter at frk. Yeah. Uh, the other social media I don't use as much. So, so don't, if, don't look for me there. Uh, okay, I, was I won't post anything. ping you there, they should just let you know on Twitter. Well, it's like useless. I mean, circles, I only post to my own circles. So uh, it's like, if you, if you circle me, it's going to be useless to you. <laughs> <laughs> so don't look for me there. <laughs> cool. Annie, where can people find you? Uh, I am on Twitter, at AnnieBugsZA, as you can see here below. Um, I also uh, stay away from the other social media. Um, I do, I do run the Let's Talk Geek Twitter account as well, um, and occasionally you can find me on Google Plus. But same thing, I, I don't post to public very often. If you're looking for me, your best bet's going to be Twitter. Cool. That's me. And yourself, yeah. <laughs> you can find me at Jan Vizere on Twitter. I'm also on Google Plus. I do occasionally post. And, but I spend most of my online time at mybroadband.ca.za. You can catch me there. I'm in the forums. I am writing articles and so on and so forth. And then I post them to Twitter. <laughs> so if, <laughs> I guess if, you, if I you, consume them. Oh, wait. wait <laughs> this is twisted. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Anyway, you can, you can follow me there if you like. Um, so with that, thank you very much for joining us. Remember to – you can follow us like on various social media at Let's Talk Geek on Twitter. Um, we've got a Google Plus page that you can search for. And you can find all our other videos on YouTube. Um, YouTube.com forward slash LT Star Network. Um, don't ask. It's a bit of a legacy thing. But, but you're geeks. You can get it. LT Star, right? Yeah. Pretty cool. Um, and uh, we also have a blag. LTG dot Let's Talk Network dot TV. Um, when the show is posted, that's where we release it to. Um, so if you miss the show, um, if you missed this show, <laughs> then you are watching us there. Congratulations. Yeah. You have found the content. But well if done. You, but and if you, you have lasted this long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. If you've missed the live stream, that's where to go catch up. Um, if you've got a long commute to work, then we can keep you company. Um, join us again next week for Let's Talk Geek. See you then. <laughs>